Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for April 1st, 2023. Well, yesterday we had um, kind of some disappointing economic data that, um, although we were trying to pump up the pre market, that quickly faded and we saw those bears kind of regain some control on the day pressing back down to to test some support levels in the charts so what does that mean for today well how about we settle in let's buckle up let's get ready for the wednesday edition of the morning market prep video Good morning once again everyone and thanks so much for being here. I do truly truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can get some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. First off when we look at the Dow, the diamonds here, you can see we've pushed back down here to test this price support in the chart. We're sitting right there on the edge of this cliff and the reason I say that is because we went straight up in this move, which means there's not a whole lot of price support in any of this price action um, uh, to the upside. There's a little tiny bit of price support right in here. So if this support level were to be breached by the, by the bears, then um, look for a fairly substantial uh, a drop to potentially occur in the Dow. You can see we've got some price support through this area in here to try and hold. However, you also want to be paying attention to the fact that this price support in here is fairly substantial. So we run that possibility that the bulls could find some inspiration in here and maybe pop us back up to maybe test some of these resistance levels up into this level. Unfortunately, what we have done here is we have created a little bit of a lower high situation in the market. Obviously, you can see I've got this little bit of a bearish downtrend in here, but clearly we um, are moving uh, pretty sharply lower in this area as well. So we could pop back up into this um, area up here and kind of run into a bit of that double whammy of price resistance and see those sellers still come in. So you'll want to be watching those resistance levels very carefully if those bulls do come in and defend this support area. Um, let's take a look at our SPY. Now SPY, similar situation here where we push down to test some support. As you can see, here's that, uh, that break where we broke the bear trend. Uh, pushing back to the upside and now we've come down to test that level right in here to see whether or not we're going to hold and if you look right across here there is some pretty good uh, compelling price support in here to catch some kind of a bounce um, in that chart so we'll want to watch that closely and if we look at the technicals here well that also adds to that compelling idea that there is some price support right in here uh, to maybe see those bulls take another attempt to push back up. Here's the unfortunate thing. As they push back up, the things that we're going to have to worry about is this resistance level right in here. And unfortunately, that's a pretty big move to the upside. So we could whipsaw up here to the ups upside pretty hard. But then as we grow back to the upside, you'll notice that we're going to start running into additional resistance levels in the chart and then that potential that we could find that lower high and yet continue to move to the downside. So as we rally back up or if we rally back up, make sure you're thinking about those resistance levels and watching for the potential to take some profits. If you're a bear, it's right up in that area where you want to start watching for that potential short in the market. Now, that's the bullish side. On the bearish side, if the bears find inspiration today and they push on through here, well, I would suggest that the next level of price support is down here quite a ways. You can see we can catch a little price support from all of these um, little consolidating bottoms right through here. We could catch some in there. If that doesn't hold, then I think we would move down into this area of price support in the chart. So kind of keep a close eye on there. Those um, bulls, bulls and bears are fighting it out. And what we're starting to see as our economic 
um, as our earnings begin to um, diminish, um, our first quarter earnings, we've been finding a lot of inspiration there to just buy, buy, buy. Um, as they continue to diminish, it's going to be harder and harder and harder to ignore those disappointing economic numbers that are really starting to um, pile up here, suggesting that the consumer is slowing down and that recession may be ahead of us. So watch that close. Our QQQ, well, this was the most overextended index in the market. And at, at this point, um, kind of remains the same way because we really didn't create much of any kind of support in this market. We just got a little bit over exuberant and pushed the market too hard. But that being said, there is some compelling evidence in here that we could catch some price support right through here for a little bit of a bullish rally back to the upside. So we'll want to watch that pretty closely here um, on the day that possibility that we could push back up. And um, also we have that evidence here of holding right in there around that 200 day moving average and that rising 50 trying to provide some support in here. Now that being said, we can't rule out that possibility if the bears find inspiration that we could push back down into there just to um, find those support levels um, in those moving averages. So we can't rule out that possibility if the bears find inspiration here on the day and we would look for that next level of price support in the chart. If the bulls are able to push through and find that inspiration in the economic numbers today or the earnings numbers, then I would look for a retest right back up in here to test that resistance level. And I think it's a little bit of a wide area, It'd probably be between here and here that we would watch for that push back up. Now, keeping in mind, as we rally back to the upside, we're going to be bumping our head into these price resistance levels and then also potentially bumping our head into that downtrend. Remember, we made a lower high followed by a lower low. That is the beginning of a downtrend. And if we continue in that pattern, well, uh, we shouldn't be surprised. So watch that close. Now, if we take a look at our IWM, IWM has been hanging in there pretty strong. Um, the small caps have been hanging in there better than some of the other um, uh, markets out there. And as you can see, just kind of consolidating underneath this resistance level of the chart. Now, once again, we created a lower high followed by a lower low, which does indicate um, the beginning of a downtrend. And if we rally back to this resistance level in here, I would be watching for that potential as we test up in here, that potential for the failure back to the downside. I'm not saying that's going to occur, just watch for it. If we're going to be bullish, we need to push on through there and then we need to prove to hold a higher low. That's how we resume an uptrend. So watch that closely. Now here again, if we look at um, potential inspiration, well, I would say if the bears find inspiration, we could test easily test this area down here on um, the IWM. If the bulls find inspiration here today, then uh, once again, I'm going to push this right back up into this area here for that next resistance level in that Russell chart. Let's take a look at our VIX. Um, I got to tell you, VIX has been relatively surprising to me how we're showing no fear in this market, despite the compounding evidence that the consumer is weakening. And as a matter of fact, we had lows this morning um, report and Lowe's also reporting disappointing results and suggesting out into the future that, um, well, they're joining the chorus of um, Home Depot, Target, um, Walmart, that the consumer is weakening. So kind of keep that in mind. And we've been showing absolutely no fear um, um, on that here in the VIX. We've just been trying to ignore these economic numbers in hopes of just forcing the market to move back higher, despite the fact that our inflation is pushing back up and the Fed is likely going to continue to press that accelerator on the hawkish side. So watching this area right in here, there is some pretty good reason to be looking for a price support level right in here on that chart. And that would be if the bears find inspiration. If they find that inspiration to push, 
this would be um, an obvious place that we could potentially bounce from. But then again, if the bears find or bulls find inspiration today, then I would look for that area to break and push on down. And maybe we push on down to retest this little upside trend in here. So watch that closely. If we take a look at our T2122, Boy, we have been whipsawing so much. These big point moves with wild and crazy volatility of the market. Um, I'm getting lots of questions from folks that are just finding it extremely challenging to navigate these whipsaws. And I have to agree, it is a very dangerous market for the retail trader because of these big point moves. And if you don't feel like you have an edge in this market, remember it's okay to protect that capital. One of our primary jobs as a retail trader is to protect our trading capital. If you don't have an edge, remember, you're not required to put money at risk. You can stand on the sideline until your edge improves in the market. Now what this chart shows us here is as we push back down, we still, I know everyone thinks it can't go any lower here, it's got to bounce soon and it very well may bounce here today or soon, but keeping in mind we still have um, an open opportunity to move to the downside if we find some reason for the bears to be inspired today. We still have more downside opportunity. And if those bulls find inspiration, then of course we've opened up a big upside opportunity here in T2122. So watch that closely. If we take a look at our uh, T2108, the percentage of stocks holding above their 50 day, or excuse me, 40 day moving average. I don't know why they used 40 day on this indicator, but they did. And so the 40 day moving average, and as you can see, about 45, 46% of the stocks holding above their 40 day moving average. Here's the good news. While we've pulled this back substantially, that's relieved a lot of that over exuberant buying that we had uh, to the upside and we're still holding on this trend so if we can find bullish inspiration in here um, we might be able to find some price support in here at least temporary uh, temporarily to give us a bounce a relief rally in this market I do think that is possible that we could get some kind of relief to the recent selling I'm not saying that it's going to turn bullish but that we could get some relief and T2108 is showing us the hope that that could be the case. T2107, I mentioned that the small caps and those percentage of stocks holding above their 200 day moving average are doing better. And you can see 55% of the stocks are still holding in there, hanging out above their 200 day moving average. And if we take a look at this trend, well, obviously that's holding up pretty darn well. And we may be coming right into that point or that place where we could find some price support here in the chart. And maybe we can catch that little bit of relief rally bounce. Once again, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to turn bullish, just that we can catch a little relief bounce in that chart. What was interesting yesterday is we've been suffering uh, from really low volume and I'm going to skip past T2101 today because we're not getting good momentum directional control. What was interesting in this chart is we were really, really low on volume and then right at the end of the day, our price action whipsawed uh, tremendously here at the end of the day and we saw a massive spike in volume. Now every day at the end of the day we see these big spikes of volume and that's just the um, indication of um, the dark pool activity being consolidated to the market um, at the end of the day. And um, my goodness that was a big spike in volume. Um, and it showed us that there's some confusion and some whipsawing even occurring within the dark pool. Um, all of these big price swings um, starting to happen, they're even affecting those institutional traders here. So we'll want to watch that pretty closely um, as we progress moving forward. You can see overall our volume still remains kind of low considering um, how big a swings we're getting in our price action. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now here's what I've been talking about as far as inspiration goes. 
Um, we saw yesterday just a horrible, um, a horrible list of economic indicators in here showing that manufacturing is slowing, consumer confidence declined, just over and over and over. It just wasn't look, looking good. We hit a new um, 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 international um, trade deficit, just not looking good. And then and this morning we're going to face a PMI number, an ISM manufacturing number, construction spending, and then petroleum status. All of these have been a bit problematic for us. So we'll want to watch that closely. Although we're pumping up in the pre-market here, just like we did yesterday, boy, we start hitting some of these numbers after the open and that could easily fade. So kind of keep a close eye on that. Remember, we're also going to have those mortgage application numbers and we've got a Fed speaker here today and they've been pretty consistent saying we're going to keep raising rates. We've got more work to do. As you're planning forward into Thursday, remember, we've got those problematic jobless claims, productivity and costs. We've got another Fed speaker, some bond auctions to think about, a natural gas report and a Fed balance sheet um, after the bell. So kind of keep those in mind as you plan forward. Um, looking at our um, earnings calendar today, we have a pretty busy day. But what we're starting to see is that little bit of a fade. We've got a lot of retail numbers here today, but we're starting to see that little bit of a fade where fewer and fewer of those big, um, big economic or big earnings numbers to really move the market um, are really starting to fade out. We're looking into the rear view mirror now on most of the first quarter earnings. And although we're going to hit some um, pretty substantial notables as we continue to uh, progress throughout the quarter, they're really starting to fade. So today on that earnings calendar, we've got a pretty big round of retail in here. We're going to hear from stocks like um, Abercrombie and F will be reporting today. We're going to hear from uh, Tupperware um, on the day. We're going to hear from Wendy's. We're going to hear from Kohl's. We're going to hear from Jack in the Box. So again, um, we're seeing quite a lot of of uncertainty on that consumer looking forward. So watch that closely. There's going to be a Dollar Tree in here um, I'm also reporting today. Other than that, we're going to hear from stocks like OKTA. We're going to hear from Jazz Pharmaceuticals. We're going to hear from STWD. We've got the WB um, reporting here as well. Um, HZ HZNP is whoops is also on that list for reporting today. Uh, Plug Power will be reporting today. So kind of keep in mind. Um, I think probably our most notable of the day is going to be CRM. Keep an eye on that. I believe it reports after the bell today. So with that, guys, if you want to catch the full list of notables, make sure you click the link just below the title of, of the video. That'll take you back to that morning blog where you might find some, uh, um, you know, some stocks that you might want to follow in those notable reports. Let's take a look at um, some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube, click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And then also, if you could click those thumbs up buttons on, um, um, on the channel to um, suggest that the, the, the video was worthy and, uh, and um, also clicking through those thumbs up buttons on other folks' comments, that helps the channel to continue to grow because of the engagement with the video. So thank you everyone who does take the time to do that. Please feel free to share these videos out on your social media feed. That helps an awful lot. And once again, just a big shout out and thank you to those of you who support the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link. If you can um, just go right below the title of the video there, you'll find that link if you want to do that. Let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up. And remember, they're not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You're going to have to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in this market. Watch these big potential whipsaws 
as we move around. Take a look at a stock like FTDR. FTDR, I've placed a price alert in here on the chart. Certainly this, this just went straight up in this rally and may need a bit more rest or consolidation along this support before it's ready to, to go. But just in case it went early, I placed a price alert up here. I'll be waiting to see if that pops through. Um, and may set up that next long side opportunity in the chart. Take a look at Cody, C-O-T-Y. Now that's starting to move through to the upside. And you can see as if we look at our trend right in here, it's a pretty darn bullish chart here. Still may have to rest a couple more days in there to come out to trend. But the way the market's been acting lately, a lot of things are moving early. So that possibility, C-O-T-Y, may make that attempt to move to the upside. You know, I've been mentioning the US dollar and the US dollar finally showing a weakening here today um, in the pre-market. We'll wanna watch that carefully. If the US dollar weakens, that could help the market rally today. We'll wanna keep an eye on that. But at the same time, I wouldn't discount this, um, this chart just yet. As this rest or pulls back, look for that next opportunity that the dollar could continue to strengthen and move to the upside. And the reason that is the case is the Fed is going to push forward with more interest rate increases. And in doing so, as they push forward with more interest rate increases, it increases the value of the dollar. So watch that closely. Um, that can have major effects on uh, the direction of the market. How about some of the short side stocks? Take a look at stocks like um, energy. Boy, energy is starting to show some major problems here. Now, XLE is setting right on a major level of price support. We're gonna get that petroleum status number today. So this is going to be important, but let's keep in mind what we've been doing is we've been failing up here, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. And as we cling to this price support, you can see yesterday put in a pretty darn big bearish engulfing candle. If that follows through to the downside today and breaks through this price support, then um, I, th I would suggest that um, we've got some issues here on the energy side of things. And what that means is when energy is weak, the consumer is weak. They're not out there spending, traveling, doing as much things. Um, as they would normally do. And we see that consumer consumer potentially weakening here. We're right at that decision point. Other places that you can look, um, now I have a bias on this one. I actually went short on Halliburton here yesterday. Um, nice little bearish engulfing, um, failing uh, right along price resistance here. Keep an eye on that. Some of these stocks are starting to show some bearishness. Um, this could have major impacts here, although I have this little bias on it. I could ha it could have major upside impacts um, on this based on how those petroleum status numbers come out today. So keep an eye on some of those. When we look at some of the big tech, um, saw some um, energy coming into some of the big techs yesterday. Amazon trying desperately to hold on to this price support in here. Obviously still in a downtrend. And remember guys, we cannot resume an uptrend until we break through the downtrend, hold a higher low. Then we have the first evidence of an uptrend and that's where I wanna be long. Not until then, because too many times we get these false pops. We pop up and fail, pop up and possibly fail. So stay away from those, wait for that to prove. Let the institutions prove that they are ready to start buying this and supporting the stock and holding higher lows in the markets. Take a look at a stock like Microsoft. Microsoft is running into a little bit of challenge itself, been trying to bounce back up here today, but it's going to be pushing back up into a substantial resistance area in the chart. So if we see these big techs pushing back up, let's watch those levels there for that potential failure. If they can push on through, hold the higher low, then let's engage with them and and pick them up to the upside because the institutions will have made a decision that they're gonna start supporting them. So watch those closely. So with that guys, I wanna wish you all a fantastic day. I wanna wish you great results in your trading. Be kind of careful out there, watch for these big whipsaws. Don't get suckered into the, into the first pop of the day because we have seen so many of those first pops 
be completely reversed just shortly after the open. Watch that carefully. Have an awesome day. I wish you all kinds of profits, and we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Wish you all the best.